Hello and welcome to another book review. Today we're going to be talking about American Colonies, The Settling of North America by Alan Taylor. So here is a quote from the New York Times book review. Alan Taylor expertly weaves together the arguments and evidence of dozens of historians and anthropologists. Taylor's strategy allows him to highlight the histories of peoples and places neglected in accounts of colonial North America. More than just a formidable work of historical synthesis, American Colonies provokes us to contemplate the ways in which residents of North America have dealt with diversity. So just a little bit of background here on the author, Alan Taylor. He's a historian at the University of Virginia, and this is not his only work. In fact, he has earned a Pulitzer Prize for two other of his books. And he specializes in various aspects of North America, including um, Canada and also aspects of the American Revolution. So overall purpose of the book is to um, challenge some of the more common historical record that really emphasize the English speaking white men who colonized and um, exploited American Indians. Now these accounts are what are often found in the in historical books and in textbooks for students, um, especially in areas that emphasize American exceptionalism. And as a quote, um, it says that story persists in our nat national culture and popular history because it offers an appealing simplification that contains important but partial truths. And that's really, um, I think, an important point to make in that a lot of times this section of history is so early in the school year for many students or it's something that isn't seen as import as um, having as much of an importance as other aspects of American history and so it's really simplified and pared down but really doing that doesn't do justice to the truth of the time so really, American Colonies is seeking to go beyond the historical record. And even some historians have done that. They've divided this um, era into, the, into Europeans, Africans, and Indians. But even that is simplifying it too much because there are various Europeans. There's, uh, there's the Spanish, the English, the Dutch, the French, the Russians. There's all these different groups. And additionally, not all Africans who came over. There were various parts of Africa that... Um, where enslaved persons were brought to the uh, to the Americas and also American Indians, many, many different tribes. So anyways, uh, Taylor is looking to expand that history and be more inclusive. So some of his main arguments or thesis questions are who was involved? How did the settling of North America transform the environment? And then what were the demographic changes that occurred? And then were those changes accepted or were they challenged? So really colonial America was home to incredibly diverse peoples who are active participants rather than passive observers to the complete evolution that was occurring. So this key and unique focus is really the idea that this is a plurality. Colonial America is not a singular place or a singular experience. Colonial America had diverse peoples, it had diverse environments, and that led to completely different experiences than what many uh, believe to be true. So the book sections, the first is about encounters. So really focusing on those early experiences, those early encounters between um, the various groups of people who were now um, thrust together. And so looking at not only the Native American societies, but also the Spanish, the French, um, and, and just how all of that came to be. The next section is where I really... Um, found to be the most helpful for me as a teacher, where it details the colonial regions. So it gives um, an entire chapter on Virginia, and then more broadly, the Chesapeake colonies. It's got New England. Also, it has the West Indies, which is often ignored in U.S. history classrooms. So anyways, it continues on and going through the colonial regions. And then last, Empires is going to continue what happens beyond just those initial settlements and actually continues all the way into the Russian uh, colonization of Alaska and then also um, the conquest that happened in Hawaii. 
So colonial empires unleashed powerful forces of disease, trade, missionaries, livestock, and war that although often beyond imperial control, fundamentally disordered the natives' world. Indians responded to the stresses with remarkable agility, but they did not have the option of ignoring the powerful changes imposed upon their continent by newcomers. I felt like that quote just really kind of summarized what happens within this text. So the important contributions include just that it's a more accurate representation of life and that it's comprehensive and intricate without being boring. You know, sometimes when you read something so, so detailed, you get lost in that and it's not as interesting. Um, but really, I didn't feel like I lost engagement because of the details. Also, it balances the importance of native importance while also avoiding the exaggeration of the power of empires. It feels like a lot of historical accounts do one or the other. It's either over-exaggerating the power of Europeans or it's over-exaggerating the, important the importance of natives. And really it's looking at what are the contributions of both? What are the effects of both? And what I really think is so helpful as either a student or a teacher is that it has an incredible biography and extensive index. So if you're just looking for something about Barbados, for example, something that maybe isn't included as much in your textbook as you would like, um, it's just got this incredible index and bibliography for you to continue to read. So I hope that this book review was interesting for you and helpful. Please like and subscribe.